Stitching Easy Scarves. And really these processes you can use on any type of fabric, whether it's a shirt or a pillowcase, or even just a piece of fiber for fiber art's sake. The first one we did was Dynaflow in a bag, scrunched up, just dry. And then we added water. When we added water, it made our colors softer and flow more so that there were no white spaces. This is what we're gonna do today with ours, except we're gonna do one more thing. We're gonna add silk salt. This is silk salt from Jacquard, and the addition of the salt at the very end makes these beautiful bursts of color. So this is what we're gonna shoot for today. Some really cool color effects. Just like we did before, we're gonna start with our bag, and I've laid out some paper on my table that's crumpled up. Last time when we did the wet run, we wanted that so that the air can get underneath our piece and help to dry it. We need that for the same reason this time, except we also want to have these peaks and valleys. It will make the bursts of color kind of flow in different directions and make our piece more interesting. So wad up some paper and put it on your station and then lay your piece of fabric out to make sure that it's large enough to cover the area that it needs to. So in the dry run, I lay it over and it fully accommodates my scarf, so I'm good. You might wanna have a little extra paper hanging around just in case when it comes time to lay your piece out. When you choose what you're gonna crumple up, make sure that you don't use newspaper that will stain any type of white fabric. You wanna use something white like a newsprint. Sometimes I save old packing material. That works fine too. So I've made my little nest in a bag and just like before, I'm gonna pour a little bit of water on here. It's about a shot glass worth of water because I'm using silk, super lightweight. Doesn't take a whole lot of water to dampen the fabric. And that's all I want is for my fabric to be damp with no dry spaces. And I can see there's a little bit of a dry space, so I'll put a lot more in there and just scrunch that up. Okay, so my fabric is wet and not sopping wet to where it's just dripping everywhere. If it is too wet, then wring it out. But in this case, I don't have a puddle of water in my bag and this is pretty fluid, so I feel good about it. So I'm gonna hold it out and then just kind of bring it back together loosely in my little bag nest so that I can then go add color. I'm gonna put some gloves on now. Okay, so now we are gonna do our salt scarf. I have my wet, damp scarf in my little bag nest and I have my Dynaflow colors that I've chosen. Dynaflow is a fabric paint that acts like a dye. So this can go on a synthetic or natural fiber. It makes no difference because it's a paint. And once it's dry, then you just heat set it with an iron and that's all you have to do. Dynaflow is incredibly versatile and I absolutely love it as a fabric paint. It doesn't change the hand of the fabric, which means everything stays nice and soft. It is a paint though. Make sure you shake up your colors that you've chosen and they're transparent, so we're gonna work from light to dark. So I'm just going to pour out some color onto my scarf. Again, I don't want puddles. I wanna err on not having enough because I can always add more. And this is the third scarf in this series, so I went ahead and added a third color. I feel like we're getting pro now. But again, if you are not sure about your color mixing, Go ahead and test that out on a paper towel just to make sure that you're getting colors that mix well together because they definitely will interact on the scarf. Great. So my color's in there. I'm gonna bunch this up and give it a smoosh. Not too much because this is already pretty wet. If I smoosh it too much, it'll just turn into one color. So just a real light smoosh on this one. And it's almost St. Patty's Day, so I went with greens. Boy, there's a lot of color on here. So I did put plastic down on my table. And of course, the paper will help to catch things as well. Fantastic. All right, so once your scarf is laid out, as soon as you get that down, that's when you're gonna apply your silk salt. Now this stuff, goes a long way 
and there's not really a too much or too little. It's just how much of an effect you want. So I'm just going to sprinkle it around across my scarf. And it's important that you work fairly quickly with this. As soon as your scarf gets laid out is when you want to put the salt on. If you wait too long, the pigments start to adhere to the fiber and they don't move around. That's why we chose to wet the fabric first. It gives those pigments a vehicle to swirl around and do these cool effects. So wetting the fabric first is really a preferred method when doing your silk salt. And again, as I mentioned before, there's not a too much or too little. If you put a whole bunch of silk salt in, you'll have this really granular effect. If you put just a few on, you'll have this really loose flowing effect. But this needs to dry, and that's when those color bursts start to appear. So I'm going to let this sit, and we'll watch how it evolves. Mm -hmm.